Well, hello, friends, and welcome into TechSag's Rewind. Billy Lucci's over there. I'm David Nuno. This is brought to you by T-Mobile. They want to remind you to visit T-Mobile.com slash Across America to learn how you can get more value and coverage with T-Mobile. Got a lot of value in the spring game, my friend. That's a terrible segue, but I enjoyed getting some football finally and uh, the overreactions, the good and the bad from it. Yeah, it's always fun. I mean, more than anything, David, that is a... That's a fun day for Texas A&M fans. It's, it's really probably the most fun day of the year for the Letterman, not only to get to play in that game, and our, 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 our own with a touchdown. Brandon, in the game, Brandon yeah. Leone, and a, a really nice TD, too. Yeah. Uh, I was actually at the Rockets game yesterday with Brandon, and, and we ran into a couple of Aggies sitting down there courtside. Mike Evans, Cedric Abway. Yeah. It was great to see Ced just sign with the Texans. Um, but Mike... You know, when Brandon and I walked up and they and, and uh, talking, Mike Mike was talking to him about the catch and the throw from like, Johnny. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he was like, "Yeah, it was not." You know, so that was cool for Brandon. You yeah. know, you got a Hall of Famer telling, "Yeah, I saw that catch. So, that was nice." You know, so <laughs> um, yeah, fun day for the letter. It was great seeing so many people. I can't even go down the list, but that makes my day. Like seeing those dudes that I haven't seen forever. In fact, after this today, there's the Boys and Girls Club golf tournament. So. Yeah. A bunch of them are still in town, so a fun weekend and, and a way to celebrate. And also, uh, best wishes to Kathy Caps, retired, and she does so much every year in putting that thing together and creating that that Legends game and badass weekend. Yeah, fans ring so many ring dunks, Aggie baseball two and one, uh, everything about it w- went off. I thought was really fun. All right, so we talked about the spring game, obviously, on the show. Broke that down as much as we could. Richard Zane joined us for a round. Aggieland, how about baseball? Uh, they had a nice series victory over Kentucky. We talked to Jim Schlossnagel on the show. Bronny joined us. And during the go hour, Kennedy Smith was, was with us. Obi takes a little vacation. Kennedy takes over, and uh, she did awesome. So that's on the Rewind. So you picked a couple, or three names, I should say, that mm-hmm. you think really shine this weekend. Some national flair, or world flair, and some Aggie flair. Yeah, well, I think this is the name that everybody's talking about right now. Tiger Woods. I mean, how can you not talk about him? I'm not going to say his performance was the best we've ever seen out of him. But, I mean, it's Tiger Woods. The fact that he came back 14 months after a near-death experience, almost lost his leg, and now he's back on the course for the Masters. He had a great first two rounds. I mean, was one under. And I think him just getting back out there and be able to make it through 72 holes is a big deal. Yeah, it's interesting. Tiger... Now, I will tell you some of the old people perspective, because my parents were in town this week, and if, if they're listening, they'll be like, again, you're calling me the old people. But I think they were t- tigered out by the end of it, because like on all the pregame stuff, it was everything about Tiger and not as much about Scotty Scheffler. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that being said, that's what people care about. People care about Tiger. And you know, love him or hate him, he is box office draw. And when he has a chance, when he's in striking distance, it's a story. But the fact is, this weekend... He was a story because of everything he overcame. Um, you've gone through a knee injury. It, like You know like how rehab and how hard it is for you to feel like yourself. How long did it take you to feel like yourself? I still don't. There you I go. mean, I, I'm coming up actually in a few weeks. Wait, that's next week next on the week. one-year anniversary of it happening. And yeah, I still don't feel the same. So, I mean, I commend him for going out there and doing that. But I definitely felt bad for Scotty a little bit because the attention was not on him. It was on Tiger. But what do you expect? I mean, Tiger kind of revolutionized the sport and made it what it is. So, yeah, he, not? he changed it. He changed it for everybody. He made it appointment viewing for, I think, the masses as opposed mm-hmm. to the, just the golf community. And there are certain athletes that I believe do that. Who else do you have on Brought the Heat? All right. Well, my next athlete isn't really an athlete. It's a coach. It's Rachel Balkovec. I hope I said that correctly. But she is a Yankees minor league coach. She is the first female minor league coach, and she's for the Tampa Tarpons. And she just made her debut as a coach and won her first game. And I just thought that was awesome to see. And love for her because she used to be a strength coach for the Astros. That's right. You reminded me of that in the pre-show meeting we were having. I had forgotten that, but that's true. I think it's a very big deal. And there was a report. It was ended up not being right, but there was a report that – who was it? Um who was it? Um, Stacy Dales, not Stacy Dales. Um, somebody had gotten a Division One coaching job. I can't remember who it was. Uh, that being said, um, it didn't end up happening. But we're going to see a a coach 
a uh, female coach in the pros, I think, very soon. And I'm talking about like the, one of the big three, if not the MLB, the NBA, which seems to be the mm-hmm. the, the first thought that comes to mind. Um, and if not the NBA, we're going to see it in um, maybe even the NFL because you're seeing, you know, referees, you're seeing analysts, you're seeing coaches all come from the, the female side. Right. And I feel like you see a lot of the times male coaches coaching female sports. So I don't see why it can't be the other way around, you know. If you know the sport well enough and study it hard enough, you can coach anyone. I think it's just really great to see, and it's going to be a big step for women. Yep. And who's uh, your third brought the heat? My third is Avery Hughes, safety for yeah. A&M. He is a walk-on, and he had to step up just because of injuries, and I think he did a great job. Two interceptions, returned one, 38 yards for a touchdown, and seven tackles. So. And he also picked up a fumble, which uh, many of us in the press box thought it was an interception. And uh, it was ended up being a fumble off of the off of, off of a catch. He picked it up. So I mean, he was everywhere. He was making tackles. Let's see if I have those stats on me right here because he was up there in the lead for tackles. He had seven, seven. tackles. Yep. Yeah, seven tackles. And Anthony Lucas on the maroon side had eight, and he was tied for second with Ish Harris there at seven. So props to Avery Hughes. Coach, I want to talk to you a little bit about how you're managing the bullpen. You and Coach Yeski with guys that have been around the block in Palish and. And Moo, you know, you go to Moo on back-to-back nights. Uh, he was outstanding, I believe, on Thursday. Um, not as sharp on Friday. So when you go to Moo and you run him down to the bullpen, is there conversations about how he feels? Or are you tracking kind of, yeah. you know, how many he threw in the bullpen the night before? Like, you know, how much feedback is there from those older guys? Yeah, a lot. I mean, you, 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 it's a great question, Bronny. Um, you, out, you know, I ask him before the game, hey, man, how do you feel playing catch? Or... I'm constantly asking guys, hey, how you feel? You know, how you feel today? One to ten. Don't don't tell me it's an eight if it's really a six. If, if it feels like a six, say six, right? And uh, and so, you know, I you know, Moo went out there after throwing what twenty five, thirty pitches the night before. Ideally, you'd like to give him a day off and then have him do it on Sunday. Um, but we're not at that point. I mean, we don't have that kind of depth. Um, Will Johnson had just. Uh, thrown what 50 some pitches on Tuesday uh you know if that would have been a Friday Saturday Sunday series instead of Thursday Friday Saturday maybe we could have brought Will back um to try and get some of those outs but uh Moo had been so good and you know he he actually did a great job he just just what you said he wasn't quite as there wasn't as quite as much bite to the breaking ball and and so I think all the runs we gave up in that inning were with two outs and I think they were all with two outs and maybe like O two two or one, two pitches. So, um, you have to give Kentucky some credit for that too, but, but yeah, when, when there's not a lot of depth down there, at least not right now, um, you can, I mean, you just, you kind of just have to ride the horses that you have. Um, I, I've said the last couple of weeks that it feels like you guys are, are not treading water, but you're grinding it out with the injuries and everything like that. And I thought, that getting Trevor Werner back would be a little bit of a shot in the arm for your club. Uh, obviously, it will help the offense and the defense. So, couple two parter here. How close is he? And then, do you believe like the insertion of Werner back in the lineup will give you guys another shot of life heading on the road to Athens and really in, into the teeth of the schedule? Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, number one, how close is he? Um, he's getting closer. Uh, he's uh, I have I, I, he. Texted me last night, said he swung the bat, hit off the tee a little bit. Uh, he took a little bit of normal batting practice on Saturday, and then were some areas of the plate he felt great on, and there were some others, say, for example, you know, ball on one or side of the plate or the other. you got to be careful he's listening here, right? Um, <laughs> you know, that that, that, that bothered him. Um, so I really don't want him hitting on the field or doing anything until he can just go all out 100%, because the worst thing you could do is kind of, force him into it and then it swings in some weird, you know, scenario and, and he doesn't have success, but assuming he can get back in there, uh, it doesn't help our pitching, uh, but it, it, it helps our defense. I think, um, Bose has done a great job. Targotch is, you know, hanging in there as best he can at third base. Um, but, uh, Werner's an elite defender. At least he was, you know, late prior to this injury. And, I, I, and he's worked his rear end off to stay in great shape. So, and then I think from a lineup standpoint, obviously going to give us some depth and, and I may, uh, you know, make some big shuffles around to, to try and get guys maybe in a little bit better positions to, uh, to, to get on base and, and to have the right guys 
hitting with runners on base. So we'll talk more about it. I mean, I'll reveal that once we get Trevor back in there. So yes. what happened in Aguilar? Because okay, I'm done with you. So I've got I've got four teams to highlight here. Okay. And I'm gonna begin it with women's tennis, who continues their role. They're ranked fifth in the country. They were in Baton Rouge on Friday. They beat the Tigers seven to nothing. Another clean sweep. Uh, only Carson Branstein and Gianna Paulette had to play the third set. A and M is eleven and zero in in conference play. They're twenty five and one overall. They have a one game lead over Georgia in the Southeastern Conference standings with just two matches left to play. They also hold the tiebreaker over the, over those Georgia Bulldogs, so the Aggies can win the SEC regular season with a single victory this week. They'll face Arkansas on Friday and Missouri on Sunday. Both of those matches on the road. Just an incredible run by that team. Let's get it done. And uh, men's golf had quite the weekend as well, David. Don't know if you saw this. They're ranked 23rd in the country, defending their home course. Uh, They won the 2022 Aggie Invitational at Traditions Club as a team. They won by 12 strokes, 23 over. Now, I'm not not a golf guy, but from what Dalton tells me, from what Sam tells me, from what my buddy John tells me, Traditions is, is an extremely difficult uh, course. course to play. So finishing 23 over is actually pretty impressive. It's one of the beauties of working As a team. here. We have people who can talk about every sport, but then we also have experts at each sport. So not only did the team win the team championship, Walker Lee won the individual title. Uh, he finished an even par 216 for the weekend. Sam Bennett, Sam Bennett excuse me, finished third at four over. The Aggies will turn their attention to the SEC championships next week. That'll be played at St. Simons Island in Georgia. The Sea Island Golf Club stroke play will begin next Wednesday, April the 20th. In baseball news, Troy Clonch, Olsen Magic Thursday night, lose a game 7-3 to three on Friday night, and then an offensive explosion, emphasis on explosion on Saturday afternoon. 17 runs on 14 hits. The Aggies took down the Wildcats 17-3 to three to win the series. Ryan Targach hit for the cycle, the second A&M cycle in 12 days. Four for five, three runs scored and five runs batted in. Dylan Rock was two for three with a homer and a triple. Four runs batted in, two walks, four runs scored, and Micah Dallas was good. Seven innings and a victory. Uh, that comes after losing the previous two rubber matches in the last two weeks. Big shot in the arm for the Aggies. They'll head to Corpus Christi on Tuesday night to face AM Corpus at Whataburger Field. First pitch, 6.30 p.m. That'll be streamed on pay-per-view, flowbaseball.com to learn more. And then my last team, David, the equestrian team. They begin their run for the NCEA National Championship on Thursday. They'll face Baylor in a quarterfinal matchup at 1.30 Central Time. That match will also be streamed on pay-per-view. HNC Plus, uh, go to horseandcountry.tv slash NCEA. The third-seeded Aggies taking on the six-seeded Baylor Bears on Thursday, Poppy. Uh, let's get into what you saw with your eyes this weekend and uh, how it is just a spring game. Well, I mean, look. Did you see? I was at practice the other day, and I was pulling up, and the, all the players that were out of practice that day were going from the indoor to the weight room to go get their work in, and and they were walking right by my driver's side door, and you know, so nobody knows someone's sitting in the car, so everyone's just walking like two foot from my door, so kind of like waiting out traffic. You know, I was waiting for my chance to open the door and go and. It was like a never-ending stream. It's like where I'm at on Wellborn right now, which we're going to have to discuss things with Hunter. He wants to get involved in the infrastructure of this city, and he's like the meddling uh, meddling town member, but yet they, this traffic is some of the worst I've ever seen. I'm going to have to figure out a whole other way to work because it can't take 40 minutes to get anywhere in College Station, but yet it does right now. Anywho... Uh, hopefully that'll mean faster, well-born for football season. But that aside, the traffic was the injured players uh, or the banged up guys, let's say. The good news is they came out of spring ball, I believe, without any significant injuries, which is A, number one, anytime you enter spring. But I've seen all those guys. I was going, how are they going to split into two teams a couple days from now? And you saw it on Saturday. You'd see a quarterback running unscathed and outrunning angles of walk on DBs. And you'd see, 
you know, and by the way, walk on DB was the star of the game, which that was, that was cool to watch with the three picks. But look, I was looking for plays by the younger guys. I was looking for uh, some of the new faces to show. I was looking for, uh, I was looking for good play from the quarterbacks. That was about the only thing I didn't think, you know, that I didn't get. I, I, from everything I've heard throughout fall camp, I mean, spring ball, all three quarterbacks look good, you know, and, and really promising things from the true freshmen and Wigman and Max Johnson coming in and being, I wouldn't say better than expected because, I mean, I think if you play at Texas A&M, you probably thought Max Johnson was pretty damn good. Um, and I think Jimbo probably knew the circumstances surrounding what Max was playing in up there in that LSU offense and how transitional it was and without uh, his best receiver in a really bad O-line. So I think Max lived up to expectations and was a lot more athletic than people thought, and we saw that on Saturday. And then Haynes King had a good spring ball. So I think Saturday, I'm watching that. I talked to people all weekend, and I'm watching – so my Haynes just throws, falls short. I'm going, oh, look, I've seen him in camp, and I've seen the way Max throws and Connor. Like, if you don't think that that wind, which I'm, I'm sitting here talking to you watching these trees and it's still going, you know, if you don't think that had a factor, then you don't know what happened at practice this week when Jimbo Fisher twice, twice during the week, you know, and we were there one of the days when they did it, right? All right, that's going to do it for the uh, Tech Sacks Rewind. Billy, what do they do? Like, comment, subscribe, and tell us stuff about us. We like that. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.